I suppose urban exploration has always been a big part of my life. Um, ever since I was a child, I grew up on a council estate from Burnley, and there were always derelict houses and buildings. We used to play in them as kids. Although it was very dangerous, there were no floorboards, half the stairs were missing. I was, obviously, as a kid, you don't really think about the dangers of it. I did my first proper true explore when I was about 14. It was an old mill uh, by, down by the Rose Grove uh, Canal in Burnley. An old smelting plant factory, and they used to make castings, cast iron castings, all the black sand everywhere. Black snakes morning, shake best tone. Don't you hear them? Allen Brickworks, just outside Halifax. Uh, we're into a little bit of urban exploration. Um, today I'm shooting with my Nikon. It's my main tool which I use. Come to uh, basically photograph the decay. A little bit of graffiti here and there. Uh, any any little interesting bits of uh, history left over that we can see. Oh, just there. Yeah. In the oh, top of the stairs, second left. Absolutely lovely if you're stopping over. The place is mainly used now for people like myself, urban exploration, urban explorers, kids that come here to tag up, shoot their air rifles. But it's really, really not too shabby. It's a fantastic place if you want to see a bit of wildlife, if you don't want deer. Right. Because you're not going to see them. And then we have another group who likes a wild camp here. But they might come back with the ones. Oh, it'd be worth it. In fact, we just had one guy come through, we weren't expecting to see him. Barn owls, you've long-eared owls, you've short-eared owls, and you've tawny owls. Now, a lot of them were giving it big licks last night, yeah. but they just don't shut the fuck up. They're yeah. incredibly yeah. noisy. And he were uh, telling us bits of bats, and he were, he were here to see, well, he were here to look at the old boiler room. This is the old boiler area, the heart of the building. Um, and the reason it closed down is because back in the day there were a big explosion here. One of the boilers blew up and took 20 people with it and the owner of the building couldn't afford to pay the compensation. So he's, he's up in the top room camping, obviously hoping to see maybe, I don't know, a ghost or some sort of impression, if it, you believe that sort of stuff. I'm not saying I do, I'm not saying I don't. Yeah. But if you get somewhere like that, you need to spot if you don't mind bringing a ladder. Fucking. You know some people get, people get snobbish about the fucking. Oh my. Like I say, each explore is different. It's got its own characteristics. This one isn't so much about the buildings for me. It's about the graffiti and the artwork and the photographs I can get from here. And sometimes we catch our buildings just in the last days of the life before they get demolished. I've done. We did a mill at Huddersfield. Uh, literally a week before, um, they demolished half the sheds, and then they're going to turn the big tower, the big main block, into apartments, luxury apartments. Um, they can't take it down because it's actually built straight into the bedrock. Must be, must be 60 feet, 60 feet of bedrock to channel through to build it. Um, and in there, there were caves. You could you could access through the back doors into the cave areas where they've actually uh, blasted the rock away. That was quite interesting. That was a nice little explore. So yeah, I mean, it's always, before before it was recognised as urban exploration, it's always been a big part of my life. I've always been fascinated by what's in there, you know, derelict buildings, old places. It, it's, it's kind of got a, just a bit of a pull to it and it draws you in. For me, I feel it's important to record and validate these old structures before they're either demolished or converted into something completely different. And the beauty and the decay as well, you know. It, it's almost like a, a canvas and how you know it changes itself like how stuff drops and how stuff falls and you record all that and sometimes you can get a, a really nice picture out of it you know so we've done the Allen Brickworks we finished up the explore there um, we had a quick drive over to 
Bradford for the next expo which is Barker End Mills so trying to show you two different types of buildings one way would mainly just serve for the graffiti and a few of the older decayed shots and then this one which is actually still a full structure the history of the building it was built in 1815 as a steam powered cotton weaving mill all the weaving sheds have gone now and it's just the main tower block that's uh, survived they do get a lot of theft here all the floors have gone because underneath the uh, concrete flooring there was a lot of Yorkshire stone paving slabs and they're worth quite a bit of money so you do get a lot of um, pilfering here We're in Barker End Mills in Bradford now. This is up on the top floor. Very stripped out. And we came, must have only been about four or five months ago. Quite a little decent expo, there were a lot to see. Still some original features. The original cast iron supports are still in place. All the old water sprinkler systems and the pressure valves. Um, not been in the basement unfortunately because it was flooded. But I do like a good mill. But I think the most, the most uh, unique one I did was the Empire Theatre at Burnley, and it took me ages to get in there. I've been, it's been on my radar for about four years, and they're only tiny access through a really small cellar window. But it's on the riverside, so if the river's up, you can't get in. And it were always, uh, it were always like a bit of a unicorn for me, you know. Every time I went, it were always sealed or every time I tried, the river were up. Anyway, I went about two years ago in summer and everything was just right, just fell in a place and it were always, it, it was just easy to get in. River were down, window were open. Somebody had left a nice little step ladder for me and it were just good inside, it was just unique. Morning light coming through holes in the roof and it just it just lit it perfectly. Uh, we went up into the, uh, into the auditorium and there were beams of light just hitting certain spots lighting light certain chairs up and it just it just gave it like I don't know a bit of a like a magical feel you know that, that's probably one of the best explores I've done so uh, talk about the safety aspect now we've shown you the dangers shown you how dangerous it can be I mean running around in a derelict building is never a good idea but we, we tend to take certain precautions we don't we don't ever break and enter a lot of people think we do I mean, the, big, the biggest thing we do is trespass, and it's a civil matter, so police tend not to get involved, you know. Um, if there's people on site, try and ask permission, I suppose. But if, yeah, if it's wide open, they fail to secure, you know, they fail to secure the building, then it's, it's open access, you can get in, we just get in. Do our thing, never break anything, never smash anything up. Caught a few kids in before, doing the same thing, we chase them out. Um, unfortunately, it's also a reason why a lot of buildings get burnt down and destroyed, I suppose. But yeah, like I say, I mean, there's certain safety precautions you can take. Good solid, good solid pair of boots. Obviously, if you're walking on nails and broken glass. We don't ever damage some structural supports for the same reason. Roof could cave in, your floors could go in. So if there's, yeah, if there's any advice I could give you, is, is just, just be careful, just be safe take precautions, always have a good torch, boots, and just don't be silly, don't be reckless like climbing up an old fire escape that you know is not fit, it's not worth it, it's not worth your life, it's a hobby.